Yeah, so how did they calculate sine 57 before calculators? So they had to do a thing called a Taylor series. So this right here is the Taylor series for sine of x. It is equal to sine of x, but it's an infinite sum. Nobody has time to go to infinity, so we make approximations doing a Taylor polynomial. Here's the graph of sine of x. Here's the Taylor polynomial of just the first term, which is just x. And we can see if we zoom in really close to zero, it's actually pretty accurate. But if we start to zoom out, we can see it starts to deviate away from what sine actually is. So here it is for two terms of the polynomial, and you can see it's more accurate for a further distance, and it's starting to take the shape of this. And it's because of the cubic term that we added. Here's three terms, here's four terms, here's five terms, here's six terms, here's seven terms, and here's eight terms. So here's all the work for the first six terms of the Taylor polynomial rounded to nine decimal points, and here's the actual value of sine 57 rounded to nine decimal points. So in order to do this, somebody would have had to calculate all of this by hand for each and every degree. And luckily, the tables I showed only went to four decimal points. This is accurate to four decimal points after just four terms of the Taylor polynomial. So they would have only had to go this far. After six terms, it's accurate to nine decimal points. So Taylor polynomial is a great way to estimate a trig function. The reason I'm doing 19 pi over 60 instead of 57 is because this function is evaluated in radians. So we had to convert the 57 into radians. And we just do that by multiplying the 57 times pi over 180. And this is how calculators nowadays calculate the sign of different numbers. They don't have a huge table stored in their memory. They're calculating Taylor polynomial polynomials up to the precision that the calculator requires. You guys are awesome and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.